Right. Thank, well, thank you very much for um, letting me come to speak today. I think this is a really important um, topic. And I'm going to be talking today um, a little bit about um, uh, archaeology, climate change, and resilient communities. Um, the um, University of the Highlands and Islands uh, that um, I and my co-authors work for um, is dispersed across the Highlands and Islands of Scotland, including 13 colleges and research institutions, of which the UHI Institute of Archaeology is also dispersed, but with a strong presence in Orkney. So that's where Orkney is in the world. And um, we've been working um, as a team across many small islands, both within Orkney and across the world. And small islands have a lot in common with each other. Amongst other, th um, amongst other things, we find that climate change, exacerbated coastal erosion, is a critical is issue for heritage. That those same eroding sites offer, um, ironically perhaps, great opportunities to access and research material including millennia of data and at a human scale. Cultural heritage on the coast that is um, massively significant for the resident population, both for identity and economy of the islands, is of course vulnerable, as you've seen. And island societies have a particular vulnerability, additionally, to international industry, to depopulation, and to a scarcity of heritage professionals due to non-return of youth university graduates and small population numbers. So this um, is a, um, just a, to um, emphasise really the problem of coastal erosion in Orkney, which um, SCAPE so admirably demonstrated is the worst one we have in our islands, the worst problem, I suppose, in Scotland. And amongst the sites that are being eroded is um, Scarabray, our World Heritage Site. So uh, Rapa Nui, right the op opposite part of the world, um, in the Pacific Ocean, is part of Chile, some 2,000 miles to the east. Many Rapa Nuians now live in Chile. It's a small place, it's less than 20 miles wide. Surrounding the island are scores of moai, these are the famous statues, and their, pla um, and their platforms called ahu um, are also situated on the coast. The ahu platforms incorporate the ashes of the dead. Climate-driven rising sea levels are actively eroding these world heritage sites. Cremation was unusually for Polynesia, the dominant burial rite during the Ahu building era, and offers an opportunity to learn much about the beliefs of society, chronology, and to become a rich source of data about the population more generally. The need for trusted homegrown archaeologists to work on these sites is apparent. In a recent series on the uh, impact of climate change on heritage sites, the New York Times quotes Camilo Rapu the head of Rapa Nui's National Park, who says, you feel an impotency in this, to not be able to protect the bones of your ancestors. It hurts immensely. So um, the inclusion of school children in the excavation and geophysics project that was undertaken was an innovation in Rapa Nui and was so well received that it is said that it will become a requirement for any future excavation teams. The project continues with contacts being developed between uh, children in um, Orkney and Rapa Nui, and the team, including the director of Rapa Nui's museum, are now also working in the Cook Islands, and this is where they are. About 20,000 people live in the Cooks today, with three times that number of Cook Islanders now living in New Zealand. Nearly 70% of the Cook's economy is based on tourism. So this is um, um, very similar, in fact, to Orkney and to um, Rapa Nui. The Cook Islands work led naturally on from research questions being pursued on Rapa Nui on ancient roads and coastal um, circuit monuments. 
The ITUTAKI Council are now looking to adopt our inclusive style of research, incorporating it into guidelines for best practice for future researchers. Um, so here uh, we created um, a sites and monuments record that can now be added to and built up. The Strip of Shore is the destination of most tourists going to Rousey and Orkney. Um, like the South Sea Islands, um, one of the problems with uh, many of Orkney Islands is that the archaeology is situated on the coast. Recent geophysics programmes here in Rousey show that the coastal area really does hold most of the sites, and behind the coastal fringe there are significantly less. The areas shown are designated by the state as being of national importance. If the concept of sustainability includes the concept of passing down heritage in good order to the next generation, we have to consider that this storm-battered, eroding coastal heritage is a problem for our time. So we welcome that, for instance, Bradford University and City University in New York wanted to work on us with, on the erosion problem in Rousey, where the study has been intensive and long-term and collaborative. The island of Sandy um, and the island of Rousey both have very small numbers of people living in them, many of whom are elderly, and like all small islands, our um, active population is already working. So we're talking about population between 200 and 500 people here, and they're already engaged with volunteering and community enterprises and work. So for the ambulance service, the fire service, all these things they have to work to do. So it's not possible to rely solely on local input for long-term project work. However, a good proportion of the population turn out to day events and identify strongly with the programme, and a local resident asking about a particular banner that was advertising the archaeology work to visitors said, it makes me feel proud to think about it. The community must and does have a role in guiding the strategic use of archaeology at these sites. So based upon community interest voiced at public meetings and in engaging with more recent history, UHI set out to do work at Scale and Broch on the Western Shore, where we have good historical records from saga times of the 13th century through to the 19th century clearances. And we've also been working on the standing buildings of the 19th century with Historic Environment Scotland on short-term short training opportunities for low-cost survey with transferable skills such as plane tabling and photogrammetry. And the What's in My Midden Days engage children and a new audience, including farmers with past agricultural practice and climate. In Papa Westry, Islanders worked with Orca um, from the UHI to um, model um, an eroding site there, recorded during the Beast from the East uh, in March. And, um, it didn't take too long as a new technique and there will now be reference points for future monitoring work and an ability to digitally build 3D models through time and following erosive incidents and to disseminate these results uh, more widely. In the island of Sandy, uh, we chose a, um, a very deep and rich erosion site at Pool to uh, undertake um, um, a project and creative practice. Eroding sites are not easy to visit or to experience. Um, ancient artefacts mingle on the ground with plastic de debris and these areas are, uh, can be seen as ones of grim dissolution. The workshop was an innovative form of experience bringing together archaeologists, artists, a clothes designer, a folklorist, environmental scientists and community for a field workshop. The Sandy workshop participants observed and recorded artifacts and materials, both ancient and modern, and used archaeological techniques of 3D laser scanning, GPS survey, artifacts recording, combined with photography, drawing, sculpture and text to e explore impressions of place and environment. Folklore around the dreadful Knuckle V inspired a new cre creation a monster who inhabits the sea and recovers detritus from the coast. A film by Mark Jenkins documents the Sandy workshop and tells the story of the monster. A creature was created from the detritus 
and this creature went on to be exhibited in a shop window in the town of Kirkwall and then into the internationally significant um, um, uh, gallery, um, art gallery in Stromness. <laughs> Um, so, that, um, in terms of text, we're, we made concrete poetry. Concrete poetry is where the meaning or effect of the words are partly or wholly conveyed by visual means. And here, an exposed section has a stratigraphic commentary created and nailed to it by the community before being rebuilt in land. In an ironic way, this echoes the more standard heritage practice of moving threatened monuments or parts of them inland. Alison Keir's recent PhD findings included that engaging with these issues, in this instant rising sea levels and the eroding coast, in a local context was shown to affect behaviour change and motivate people to a state of action. So this was our conclusion from these workshops that they actually lift people's attention to climate change and to modifying behaviour for instance, towards littering um, in the sea. So it's been a very effective use of the local heritage, as well as being part of the greater research programs that we undertake. Thank you very much. <laughs>